Ciao friends, welcome to the whiteboard. This series is uh, just an additional element to learn abstract concepts that exist in a tabular modeling and in a DAX language by using the whiteboard to describe in a more graphical way something that is not easy to understand just looking at the code. This is the same technique that I usually use in classrooms in an interactive uh, way, but in a recorded video using the whiteboard, I hope that we will give another perspective. So this is not just a way to learn these concepts from the beginning, but just an additional element to improve the understanding of these concepts. Today we talk about the expanded tables. What is an expanded table? An expanded table is a table that, when it is applied to the fitter context, is expanded using including all the columns of other tables in the model that can be reached through many to one regular relationships. Now, this is the definition, but what is the implication of that? And actually, what does it mean when, when you use DAX? So by using the whiteboard, I will try to describe what happens when we remove and apply filters using tables in the filter context, looking at the side effects um, watching what happens in the filter context in a conceptual way. So let's go to the whiteboard. So we start the first example looking at what happens when we remove a filter from the filter context using a table reference. In this case, we have a report where we have the percentage of sales, which is a measure that is defined using a division between the sales amount and all sales. In all sales, we use the the remove filters of, from the sales table to remove any filter from the sales table to get the sales amount for all the transactions in the sales table. Now, there is nothing strange here, but if you remember how the row context and the filter context work, actually looking at this code, we should not expect a good result unless the expanded table um, is used. But we didn't see the expanded table so far. So let's see what happens in the filter context with the notion we learned in the previous episodes of uh, this series. So here we have, in, um, I, I copied here in the, on the whiteboard the same report. And I want to analyze what happens for this cell, the sales percentage of the product brand Contoso. You know, when uh, we have uh, a cell in the report, we have a filter context that uh, contains uh, for each column a table with the list of the values for the um, values that are filtered there. In this case, we only have the brand column, the brand column from the product table. Okay. And here we have only one value, which is Contoso. So Contoso is uh, the only value in the filter context, and this produces the value that you see here for sales amount, sales amount of Contoso. This is what happens. So far, so good. But we have a divide, sales percentage performs a divide, and in the denominator, we compute all sales, which is this measure. And this measure is removing the filter from the sales table. Now, if you think for a moment, the sales table is a table that has many columns, but these columns do not include the product brand column. If you think about the model, which is here, we have a um, column product key here, this one, and a column product key here, but the sales table only contains product key. Where do we have the brand? The brand is one of the columns of the product table, so it will be included here. So when we write in the uh, measure, remove filters, sales, we expect that all the columns of the sales table are removed from uh, the filter context. But if I remove all the columns from the, uh, all the filters from the columns of the sales table, I should not remove the filter of a product brand. But we see from the fact that the sales percentage works that actually the result is correct. So what is happening? Well, whenever we apply a, a reference to a table name like sales, so let me highlight this, we wrote sales, which is a table reference. Whenever we reference a table, 
then the table that we get in the filter context includes all the columns of the table that we mentioned plus all the columns of the other table that are reachable through many to one relationships. Only regular relationships going many to one expand the table. So a, a regular relationship is a relationship that connects two tables in the same data source. And so for example, this does not include uh, relationships between uh, a table in uh, one data source, for example, an imported table and a table in another data source in direct query mode, just to make an example. And when this happens, you will see different elements here in the relationship. But in regular relationships of imported data models, all the tables on the one side of a many-to-one relationship are part of the expanded table, which means that we have all the columns of the store, date, customer, and product table, which means that when we remove the filter from the sales table, we're removing the filter from the sales table, from the product table, from the customer table, and so on, because all these tables are part of the expanded table. And because we are removing the filter from all the columns of the product table, this filter is gone. Now, what happens now? The filter context is completely empty. We no longer have any filter in the filter context. So the result of uh, the all sales measure here is the result of uh, all the transactions, this number, 12 million. And so we always divide whatever value we have for the brand, like Contoso, so this value in the denominator is divided by the grand total in the denominator. So this is the effect of the expanded table. Referencing a table includes all the columns of many other tables you have in the data model. But now what happens when we have um, a filter that is not just a, a filter removal, but we apply a filter. Now, remember, you should filter columns, not tables. And now I'm going to show you an example where we have a report where we divided the value of the red sales measures that you're going to see in a moment by the sales amount of that brand. So we want to see this percentage, how much of the sales of a brand are made of red products. So how did we write this? We have a percentage sales measure that divides sales amount, sorry, a percentage red sales measure that divides red sales by sales amount. We know sales amount is just the, the regular calculation of sales amount. Let's take a look at the red sales definition. Now, this is not an efficient way to write this measure. It's just easier to write key filters, product color equal red. But what happens if you use filter with a table, with the sales table. So the result we get is actually correct. But let's take a look at our whiteboard. So I prepared here once again. This is the model we have. Sorry, this is the report that we have. I just focus here on red sales and I want to describe what happens in the filter context where we when we execute this code. So let's go step by step. First of all, we have an initial filter context for this cell Contoso which has a filter in the brand column of the product table that only has one value, Contoso, Contoso, only one value, okay? So this is the initial filter context. In this filter context, the filter argument is evaluated. What does it mean? The filter argument is this part. So filter says blah, blah, blah. So first of all, the sales table is iterated in the current filter context. So only the rows that are visible in the current filter context are iterated by this uh, table reference. And so the sales uh, rows that are computed by this filter are all the rows in sales that exist with a product that, is, uh, that belongs to the Contoso brand. So this is already a restriction of the sales uh, rows. And so the sales is evaluated in the current filter context. The result of sales contains only the columns that have a certain brand, Contoso, and a certain color. Because we are saying for each row in the sales table, only for those tables that belong to product 
are part of the Contoso brand, we want to get only those that have a color that is red, using related. Now, if these are the, the, row, the, the columns of the sales table, as we said, because we are using uh, sales, when this table is prepared and only a few rows are filtered, the columns that are included in the table are all the columns of the sales table plus all the columns of the product table plus all the columns of the customer table and so on. And if you remember, we have in the product table two columns, with one is brand and the other is uh, color. In the rows that we are keeping here always have the same brand, Contoso, and the same color, red. So we expect to have the same value and the same value here, red, for all the rows that are retrieved by this filter sales. But imagine that virtually we are applying this huge table that has a lot of columns and maybe multiple rows into the filter context. Because this expanded table only incl also includes the product brand column, which is this one. This is going to, sorry, I wanted to use another color. So the product brand column is applied to the filter context. So this is going to override the existing column here. And now my table, the result of the filter, is overwriting all the existing filters in the filter context. But because it has been built using the existing filter in the filter context, we actually see that this is like adding a filter to the filter context. But at which price? Look at the cost of this. So the cost of the expanded table is much bigger. We have more rows and more columns, a lot of memory that has to be consumed to apply this filter to the filter context just to compute something that we could have obtained by just adding a simple, small column filter in the filter context. Now, the engine, in a case like that, is able to optimize the calculation, and you probably will not see a performance degradation if you just use a simple additive measure without complex calculations in the middle. But it depends, right? You have a more complex calculation, you have certain functions, you have distinct count, you have non-additive measures. In all those cases, the filter context, sorry, the engine is not able to optimize the filter context and it has to do a lot of more, a lot, a lot of work, uh, additional work. And why? Because what you are saying, you want to get a huge table as a filter. Remember, filter columns don't filter tables. So we have seen that the expanded table is uh, what you get in the filter context every time you use a table reference, pushing a filter to the filter context. The expanded table could be expensive, but also has other implications that we didn't see in full detail here. My goal was just to give you an idea of this notion of the expanded table that when applied to the filter context, overrides every existing filter of the columns of the other table. At the, at the same time, it could have other implications if you have other relationships, uh, especially uh, bidirectional filter, for example, that we didn't cover in detail. We, I just wanted to uh, take a look at the concept, at the conceptual idea of this expanded table applied to the filter context. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Look at the other episodes of the whiteboard and enjoy DAX. Mm -hmm.